What is going on my friends? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to episode two of the wrecked Honda Civic Type R rebuild. Yesterday we made a ton of progress on this car, got the whole front end ripped off, kind of did a quick assessment, figured out what we need to order for the car, what kind of framework is needed on the car, realized we had a hole in the oil pan. And I hate to start this video off with some very, very terrible news, but I don't know how I didn't see it sooner. Check this out. We have a massive gaping hole and our transmission. So if anyone's got a FK trans for sale, hit me up. And when I say massive, I mean massive. That's, that's pretty massive. So the two main expensive components of this car that I was worried about are both, you know, a little sus. The engine not having the oil cap on it and having a giant hole in the pan from when it got wrecked. And then the trans, of course, being shot from when it got wrecked as well. It must have pushed the motor so far back it does look like every single motor mount on this car is broken as well. The rear pitch stop is broken. The trans mount on the driver's side is broken. The engine mount on the driver, passenger side is broken. Pretty sure if I pulled out our subframe right now, the whole drive train would just fall on the ground because there's literally nothing holding it up. It's just resting right on the on the subframe. I do want to figure out if this motor's toast or not today. I did go ahead and pick up a oil cap and a new oil pan for the motor. So I do want to, you know, put the pan on, throw some oil in it. And I think everything's still connected enough to, to where we can just fire it up. Of course, we don't have the intercooler on the car and uh, that would be a massive leak, but it should be enough to fire it up still, I hope. At least be able to tell if it's gonna run. To pull the pan, it looks like we have to unbolt the AC compressor, which is also no good. Take off the down pipe. I believe this would be considered the front pipe on this car, so pull that off as well. And then we should be able to pop the pan off and get a rough idea of if this thing's gonna be any sort of usable or not. All right, place your bets right now. How messed up is this thing underneath the cover or the pan? My bad. I might pull the box over too. That's probably why I said that. So we got the pan off. Okay. There's a little bit of gunk in there. It's Let a me big ass pan. It is it is very big. I'm gonna put the car up in the air real quick and show you guys how immaculate immaculate the bottom side of this engine is. It's perfect. Can I pull the lever? What lever? Right here. That's the dipstick cost. Oh. So if we take a look here, I was expecting the pump to be cracked or the pickup to be cracked or something, some sort of damage. And Lo and behold, this thing is spotless underneath the pan, which is very, very, very promising. We had bad news earlier with the destroyed trans, but now that the, the engine, I think is gonna be fine, I'm excited. So. Remember the slug that I thought you had? Yes. It's just that stuff. CV axle grease? Yeah. 
Hopefully, I purchased the right oil pan for this car. It is, cool. I was worried for a sec. Here we have a brand new OEM Type R oil pan. Butamus. Butamus. And that was actually like kind of expensive if I remember correctly. I also picked up an OEM oil cap. Get out of town. So the plan is to put this pan on, seal it up, get it nice and tidy. I'm just acting like, you know, I'm acting like I'm just doing a rebuild on it. It makes no sense, Devin, shut up. Anyways, I'm just gonna put the pan on, put the cap on, put oil in it, and try to fire it up. If all I wanna do is just hear it run, and then I'm sure I'm gonna pull the whole motor and trans out of the car because of course the trans needs to be replaced, which sucks. Let me clean up the block, get some seal on that girl, and get her up in there. No, come in. I don't want to. Ooh, what an ultimate fit. So I got the new pan on. I'm a little, you know, just, I'm nervous. <laughs> I am going to go ahead and make sure it turns over first. That's probably a good idea. I'm never. thinking it will just fine, but just, you know, for fun. Honey, you've never been nervous. I haven't. Mm. Look at this floppy motor. Oh, she turns over. Maybe we should like look at the motor mounts. There is none. There, every motor mount on this car is broken. Is that okay with you? Not really. If it runs, it's going to be shaking everywhere. That's fine. That, you're the one who's starting it. <laughs> you can go shaking around with it. <laughs> All right. I'm going to put some oil in this thing, throw it. I throw the battery on a jump pack. There's so much stuff off the car, I'm not sure if it's gonna allow it to run. These new cars are whack. If this is an Evo, it would start up just fine like this. Being a hot Honda. 2021. Know. Yeah, this thing's a 2021, dude. It's all canvas, dude. It's all a canvas. All right, thing. baby, let's get her done. It's a fancy stick. It's not the only fancy stick in the shop right now. Can get it in the hole. Perfect. I don't like that stick. Should we just send it? Or should I like unplug the crank sensor and see if it'll like sound fine? Or is that kind of being a... Yeah. All right. All right. OEM spec. <laughs> Ow! Do you want me to do that to you? No. Is the ignition on? There's like it, power. we have power on the in Ignition. That's a start. Can I press it once? Sure. Again. Ooh. To start, hold remote near start button. You must. Where's the key at? Huh. Do you have like remote start or something? Is the key in here? Yeah. All right, hop in and hammer down. For real? We're doing it right now? Let's do her. Okay, Bobby. If the rod throws out the bottom, just shut it off. Hit it. 
Start, hold the remote in your side button. This battery's at two volts. Round two. Okay, okay. Oh, 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 fuck! Let's go. What? Oh Fire this bitch up! Hold her off limiter. <laughs> what? Bro, I'm shitting myself. Your I reaction. I had, dude, it fired right up. It shot smoke right at you or something. Oh, Dirt. Right, send her. Oh, wait. It's so loud, too. That's gonna be so loud, yeah. I love this thing. Wait, hold her, hold her wide open. I thought there was no way it was just gonna fire up. Bro, that was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. The whole thing's just gonna be flopping back and forth. Hammer. What's it doing? There we go. Yeah, we're gonna bolt her on. Just <laughs> she might have seized up on us. Does it have like a defined cranking amount of it time? Sounds, sounds like like you can't just hold it and keep it cranking. I don't think. It just cranks for like two seconds. I have a feeling it trips something. Now. It started it right up, and now. It and then it, yeah. So we got the first start. We could not get anything past the initial first start. For some reason, I'm guessing some sort of computer or ECU maybe just got tripped. And it was like, huh, I realized half the car was missing and then did not want to run. But it starts and it runs and that's all I wanted. Are you hyped? I'm so freaking hyped. Yes. So I think the rest of the day, I'm just gonna go ahead, pull the motor and trans out of the car. <laughs> what? You're just crazy. Why? It's gonna be so fun. Yeah. I'm gonna kind of treat it like it's an Evo, right? Pull the subframe, motor trans, probably bring it to the frame shop and have everything straightened out. I do need to get a couple parts in before I can do that. I'm worried that front subframe is bent as well, so I gotta get one of those, but yeah, it runs. And that's can all that matters. Can you even do a heel click? <laughs> that was pretty good, very good. About 45 minutes later, the engine and trans and subframe are out. Much, much easier doing it on a front wheel drive car versus all wheel drive. You don't have to worry about the T case or 
the drive line or anything. Very, very simple. Our trans is quite a bit worse than I expected, or than I thought, doesn't really matter, but that mount broke, we got a hole there, that mount snapped off, a big giant crack right there, and then you guys probably remember, and if you don't, I'll show you when I get the engine off the subframe, massive hole in the bottom of the trans as well. So let's go ahead, pop off the engine and trans off of the subframe, and then we gotta pull the trans off the engine, and we gotta get a replacement trans in for this thing. All we should have to do is just pop these CVs out. Well, that one already came out because that one is destroyed, but pop this one out and we should be able to just lift the trans and engine right off. So the engine is in pretty much perfect condition, thankfully. Other than that oil pan we already fixed. We have a broken sensor here. And then it looks like the wiring connector, the sensor right there broke as well. So hopefully I can find just replacement connectors and go ahead and repin that little harness so we don't have to replace the whole harness. That would be ideal. And the rest of this thing, of course, minus our messed up turbo, is perfect. I don't see anything else wrong with it. Trans on the other hand is destroyed. All right, I feel like this is a pretty good place to end out today's video. Made really, really good progress today on the Type R, which I'm super stoked for. I do need to get some critical and crucial parts in before we can make some serious progress. I already do have some parts here for the car, but there's other stuff like this front subframe. It might be usable, I don't know. I don't want to chance it being bent and then bring it to the frame shop, bring the car to the frame shop with the subframe and then have stuff just not lined up. So I'd rather just get it replaced and be at 100% certain that it's perfect. But motor seems to be good. Trans, of course, no good. Motor's good. It's kind of a win-lose situation. Thank, I would much rather have the motor to be good because I think a used Type R motor's like 7K, a used Type R Trans is like 3K. So kind of a win there. And then, yeah, as far as frame-wise goes, I can see obviously a whole lot more now that the engine or the whole drive frame is out and i'll show you guys as well in case you guys see something that i don't see but from the most part i see that right there that's folded in quite a bit it may need to be replaced i'm gonna leave that up to a professional i am not comfortable at all with frame repair not yet so that either pulled out or replaced everything from there on back it looks perfect everything up in here is perfect same thing on that side that's pushed down a little bit not nearly as bad as the other side and the rest of it does look perfect a little bit of damage right there from the steering column getting pushed back so all in all i consider that a win hope you guys enjoyed today's video thank you for watching it seems like you guys are pretty stoked on the on the type r build and if you have any suggestions for the build drop a comment below if you're partying on a type r specifically one that's like hit in the back and has a front end a ton of front end good parts on it hit me up because i need so many parts for this car peace out my friends i'll see you boys in the next one